Have a good day to everyone. Welcome to this particular presentation today. We are so grateful and we want to praise and thank God for His mercy to us. And our topic today is so crucial, not only in this time, but towards the end of time. Because we're going to talk and answer the question, who is your king? In this presentation, you have understand that we have this partner in this ministry. And we are praying together that what we are going to present to you would help us uh, improve the way how we can communicate the message of God. So the question that I'm going to answer today which we're going to get the answer from the scripture is the ultimate allegiance. King Jesus or the king behind the spiritual Babylon that is enveloping the entire world. Who is your king? Many of us would answer that directly, easily. But when we think it deeper according to the scripture, there is an unseen king behind all the powers, the rulers of this world that wants to compete with King Jesus. And so we need to follow Jesus from the cross to the heavenly sanctuary. By following him, we are sure because when we follow Jesus, we will never walk in darkness because he is the light. The promised king. According to the Bible, God declares to Abraham, I will make you exceedingly fruitful. I will make you nations of you and kings shall come out from you. Genesis 17, 6. Now, we understand in the patriarchal era, time that God talked to Abraham that out of his family, kings will come. But God is so specific. The tribe kings will come. And he says in Genesis 49, 10, The scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet until Shiloh comes. And to him shall be the obedience of the people. Clear. Meaning to say, is specific. From the tribe of Judah. And this was rep uh, 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 repeated in the book of Numbers. I see him, but not now. I behold him, but not near. A star shall come out of Jacob. A scepter shall rise out of Israel and batter the brow of Moab and destroy all the sons of the Tomo. Numbers 27, 17. Here we see that there is really kings that is coming. But now is a particular, the ship there, Shelo. And so we need to understand because the devil read also the Bible. He looked at the prophecy that it would not fulfill what God had. He is a best reader on the Bible. He studied God's plan. He studied God's working, especially what is in written in the Bible, to thwart the plan of God. So the first attempt to divert God's plan, listen, during the time of Judges, was the first attempt to swerve and rewrite what has declared specifically in his word which the tribe of kings would come from Judah. Listen, when the men of Israel said Gideon, rule over us, both you and your son and your grandson also, for you have delivered us from the hand of the Midian. But Gideon said to them, I will not rule over you, nor my son. Roll over you. The Lord shall roll over you. Judges 8 verses 22 and 23. Why? Because his tribe was Manasseh. 
Judges 6.15. It was time when Israel played a harlot. Judges 8.27. Meaning to say, Israel went into now an apostasy. And so, God's plan original is from Judah. And what I love with this man who delivered the Israelites from the enemy. And he wants to be declared to be a king, but he refused because he said, I belong to Manasseh. I don't belong to Judah. The scepter comes from Judah. What do you mean by Judah? Most of us have understand the word Judah in relation to Judas. Judas means to say it's a bad name. Because Judas betrayed Jesus. But actually the name is so precious. In Hebrew, Judah or Jew means praise. The scepter of praise. That's the meaning of Judah. So if you name your sons Judah and he is not praising the Lord, change that name. So the second attempt to destroy God's plan. Now, therefore, if you have acted in truth and sincerity in making Abimelech king, and if you have dealt well with Jerubal and his house and have done to him as he deserved for my father fought for you raise his life deliver you out of the hand of the Midian God sent the spirit of ill between Abimelech and the men of Shechem and the men of Shechem dealt treacherously with Abimelech Judges 9 verses 16 17 and 23 and Abimelech was not in the tribe of Judah so, the Israelites, because they are already in apostasy, whoever delivered them from their enemies, the one too, it stole them as their king. This is the second time where they destroyed. And so, meaning to say, there were attempts. Now, we have discussed two. So, meaning to say, the scepter that divides and usurps Israel from legitimate tribes. So, I put this as an illustration, meaning... There is only one tribe where kings come. And the final king which will be born. And so, the third time. The third time attempts to succeed. Succeeded to thwart God's plan. But you today rejected God himself. Save you from all the adversities and your tribulations. And you have said to him, no, sit king over us. Now therefore present yourself before the Lord by your tribes, by your clans, from the tribe of Benjamin. Then Samuel explained to the people the behavior of royalty and wrote in a book and laid it up to the Lord. And Samuel sent all the people away, every man to his house. First Samuel 10 verses 19 and 25. Saul was in a tribe of Benjamin, finally succeeded in twisting, thwarting God's word. Wow. Just imagine that. Keep on attempting. They know already this is not God's will. This is not God's plan. Because God's plan is only from the tribe of Judah. Here is a very interesting. Because today, People, those who have done to them something, they want to make them as their hero. This is what happened in the history of Israel, but it took place in the time where they were in a deep apostasy. King Saul. People succeeded. And what I like with God is that the people demanded, give us a king so that we will fight like other nations. Oh, copying, we call that in theology, syncretism. Borrow from another and make that. But God's original plan for raising kings and kingship of Israel, that kings comes from Judah, not from any tribe. God is the king of Israel at the time. 
But when the people rejected God and chose Saul to be their king, ended all the horrible picture. Note that after the death of King Saul, never again he was mentioned in the Bible as king of Israel. For he was not in God's plan. He was the people's plan. Can you just imagine? Let us remember what happened. So, in the time when people now they have their king, listen. 1 Samuel 8, 19. Nevertheless, the people refused to obey the voice of Samuel and they said, no, we will have a king for us. They are insisting. And 1 Samuel 10, 17 says, and Samuel called the people together to the Lord at Mizpah and said to the children of Israel, thus said the Lord God of Israel, I brought up Israel out of Egypt and deliver you from the hand of the Egyptian and from the hand of all kingdoms and from those who oppress you. But you have today rejected your God who himself saved you from all your adversity and your tribulation. You have said to him, no, sit a king over us. Now therefore present yourself before the Lord by your tribes and by your clans. Who is the king of Israel? God. But there were so many a theme of changing God as their king. So finally, God gave what they have asked. Back to God's plan. God's, God's will and plan fulfilled. According to Genesis 49.10, no record of up there after King Saul or even Jonathan, supposed to be the next king. Now David was the son of Ephratite of Bethlehem, Judah, whose name was Jesse, who had eight sons. Did you understand now? It took many, many years. God's plan to be fulfilled. Because there were other tribes. Now, after he gave the judges for about 450 years until Samuel the prophet, afterward, they asked for a king, so God gave them Saul, the son of Kis, the man of the tribe of Benjamin, for 40 years. And we remove him, he raised up for them David as king to whom? Also, he gave testimony, I have found David, the son of Jesse, a man after my own heart, who will do all my will from this man. Said, according to the promise, God raised up Israel, a savior, Jesus. That's according to Dr. Luke in Acts 13, 20 to 23. So here comes now God's plan in the tribe of Judah. And he chose David. This is God's plan. My friends, my brothers and sisters, the problem is that I have read a lot. We need to follow God's plan for our life. And so, Judah, the royal tribe. Genesis 49, 10, the scepter shall not depart from Judah until Silo comes. That is another name of Jesus. Meaning to say, People prone to find substitute, replacing God's will. God's plan again destroyed. Did you remember when Solomon took the kingdom after King David? His hands changes because only in the tribe of Judah, the king will come. Now it happened at the time when Jeroboam went out of Jerusalem that the prophet Ahijah, the Silonite, met him on the way and he had clothed himself with a new garment. 
And the two were alone in the field. And then Ahija took hold of the new garment that was on him. And he tore it into a 12 pieces. And he said to Jeroboam, Take for yourself 10 pieces. The saith the Lord, the God of Israel, Behold, I will tear the kingdom out of the hand of Solomon and give 10 tribes to you. But he shall have one tribe for the sake of my servant David. For the sake of Jerusalem, the city which I have chosen out of all the tribes of Israel. Now, this is very clear. The kingdom has been divided. We call that uh, divided monarchy. So, when the divided monarchy, the ten tribes, they have their own kings. But God is specifically, there is one king. And that is in the tribe of Judah where David came from. So, before, two times thwarted, finally successful, and then returned to God's plan. But after King Solomon, it became worse because all tribes wanted to have their own kings. A displeasure to God because that is not his plan. So, Mixing and confusing names clarified. I want to clarify that because many did not understand this. The ten tribes that occupied the northern part of the land of Israel called the northern kingdom is also called Samaria or Ephraim. We need to understand that. And Israel was a common name for both kingdoms before their captivity. So, the name Israel is generic, but it was personal in the time of Jacob. But when there was at 12 tribes, it is also called Israel. But when they have chosen kings, the 10 tribes, chooses for their kings, Samaria, Ephraim, Northern Kingdom, the seat. But context made it distinct. Like Israel refer only to the ten tribes, like Ezekiel 9, verse 9. The two tribes, Judah and Benjamin, that settled in the southern part was called Southern Kingdom, Judah, or Jerusalem. So that's clear. Because sometimes we preach here, we confuse them. And Israel, but actually is Judah. You cannot call Judah and Benjamin Israel after their captivity. That is not the meaning. So when we see Samaria, 10 tribes. When we see Jerusalem, 2 tribes. We cannot see Israel. But before their captivity, yes. So I think that's clear. So the sin of Israel and Judah led their captivity. When I see Israel, 10 tribes. When I see Judah, means the tribe of Judah and Benjamin. Ezekiel 9 verse 9, and he said to me, The iniquity of the house of Israel and Judah, exceedingly great in the land that is full of bloodshed, and the city full of perversity, and they say, The Lord has forsaken the land, and the Lord does not see. What is the sin of the twelve tribes? The sin. Hosea 5, 14, For I will be a light, a lion to Ephraim, that is the ten tribes. And like a young lion to the house of Judah, that is Benjamin and Judah, whose capital is Jerusalem. I, even I, will tear them and go away. I will take them away and no one shall rescue. So, the tribes of Israel, Ephraim, to Assyrian captivity in 722 BC, and Judah and Benjamin to Babylon in 586. This is a very interesting because the end of the ten tribes was Assyrian captivity. First King 13, yet the Lord testified against Israel and against Judah. So again, I said, Israel, ten tribes. Judah, two tribes. By all of his prophet, every seer, saying, Turn from your evil ways. Keep my commandments, my statutes, according to all the law which I have commanded to your father, which I have sent you by my servant, the prophets. Nevertheless, they would not hear, but stiffened their necks, 
like the necks of their father who did not believe in the Lord their God. And they rejected his statutes, his covenant that he had made with their fathers, and his testimony which he testifies against them. They followed idols, becomes idolaters, and went after the nations who were all around them, concerning whom the Lord charged them that they should not do like them. What a sad history. It was King Salmanasser of Assyria that took the tribe of Israel, Samaria, or Ephraim. So, it says here, so they left the commandments of the Lord their God, made themselves molded images and two cubs, made of wooden images, worship all the hosts of heaven and serve Baal. This is what happened. You can just imagine. They are the people of God, but they worship worse than other nations. Therefore, the Lord was very angry with Israel and removed them from his sight. And there was none left but the tribe of Judah alone. Also Judah did not keep the commandments of the Lord their God, but walked in the statues of Israel which made which they made. So we, 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 we can see what happened. And so the Lord rejected the descendants of Israel, afflicted them, delivered them into the hands of the plunderers until he had cast them from his sight. For he tore Israel from the house of David and they made Jeroboam the son of Nebat the king. Then Jeroboam drove Israel following the Lord and made them to commit great sin. For the children of Israel walked in all the sins of Jeroboam, which he did. They did not depart from them until the Lord removed Israel out of his sight. And he said by all his servants, the prophet, so Israel was carried away from their own land to Assyria until to this day. Just imagine that the second kings, they were taken to Babylon. What happened? They have committed sin. The sin at the beginning was changing their king. They have not followed the will and the plan of God which tribe really should have the kings. Judah ended in Babylon in 586 BC. Jeremiah 52 3 says, Because the anger of the Lord, this happened to Jerusalem and Judah. As I said, Jerusalem and Judah means Judah and Benjamin, the last two tribes, because the last ten tribes were taken to Assyria, Assyrian captivity. Till he finally cast them out of his presence. Then Sedekiah rebelled against the king of Babylon. Now it came to pass in the ninth year of his reign, in the tenth month and the tenth day of the man, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and all his army came against Jerusalem, encamped against it, and they built a siege wall around it all around. So they were invaded by the king of Babylon. Second Kings 24, 10 says, At the time the servants of King Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came up against Jerusalem and the city was besieged. His servants were besieging it and he carried captive, captivity all Jerusalem. All the captains, all the mighty men of Balor, 10,000 captives and all the craftsmen, the smiths, none remain except the poorest people of the land. And he carried Jehoiakim captive to Babylon. His officers and the mighty of all the land carried into Babylon from Jerusalem to Babylon, all the valiant men. So what happened? The same. But they were given 100 years to repent. When, when the ten tribes committed sin, they were given years to repent. But they have not. They were committing more sin rather than the ten tribes. Finally, they ended in Babylon. After Babylonian captivity, no more line of king in Judah except Jesus, the son of David. Have you wondered that? Why? 
because they have violated, transgressed the specific will of God that the king really should come from the tribe of Judah, not from any other king. And so the last two tribes ended in Babylon. So no more king. As you look at that, the last king of Judah when taken captive by Babylon by Sidikiah, according to 2 Kings 24, 17, 20. God promised before the throne, David shall never lack a man, king, who sit on the throne of his house, Jeremiah 31, 17. Can you see the promise? David shall not lack of kings that would replace him, succeed him in his throne. But after Babylonian king, no more succession. So from Babylonian captivity in 586 BC to 3 and 4 BC, there was not king that sat on the throne of David, but a king was born, Jesus. And the Magi says, where is he born king? But the Jews refused him. King and finally rejected the last king. What did he say? We don't have any king but Caesar. Absolutely, they changed their king. That's why I'm asking, who is your king? Because God's people changing, changing, changing. Finally, the ultimate king of the universe came and rejected them. And in chorus, they said, we have no king except Caesar. And Jesus the kings of kings and the lords of lord was dethroned, rejected, and the result, you understand what happened to Israel until today. Several months of travel, the wise men of the east looking for a newborn king, and Matthew 2 1 says, now, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod, the king, behold, the wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Who, where is he who was born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and come to worship him. Just imagine, it is pagan people who welcomed the king Jesus when he was born. They are walking for months. Facing dangers. Because according to tradition, three wise men. But they are a group of people because they travel the magi from very far place. Facing all the challenges, the danger and the weather and all those bad elements along. And finally they landed in Jerusalem and they asked, where is that born king? And Israel did not know. Did not know. So, years of probation of Jewish nation is closing. And the opening of probation of the Christian is beginning. When God delivered Israel from Egypt, the inhabitants of Canaan, their probation is almost closed. The years of probation of Israel was determined already while they were in Babylon as the angel Gabriel Rebuilding to Daniel, Daniel 9, 24, 27. They were given an ultimatum of 490 years after the death of Jesus on the cross on AD 31, probation clause, yet still continuous a nation until AD 70. It was a given due to transition and preparation of the Christian to leave the city and to do the preaching of the gospel of the entire world. John 12, verse 12. The next day a great multitude had come to the feast. When they heard that Jesus was coming, they took branches of a palm trees and went out to meet him and cried, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel. But if you try to look at other references, it was the children, the ignorance who will pronounce it. Not the leaders, not the religious leaders who have read the prophecy of Daniel, the exact time, the arrival, 
who read also in the time of Micah the exact place where the king will be born. The place, that the date, the time, and the place is exactly given in the prophecy in Daniel and Micah. And so, then Jesus had found a young donkey, sat on it. It is written, fear, daughter, behold, your king is coming, sitting on a donkey's colt. His disciples did not understand these things. But first, when Jesus was glorified, then they remembered these things, what were written about him, and that they had done these things. Just imagine. Three years and a half, the disciples was with Jesus. They did not understand who Jesus is. And they were happy. Why? Did you remember that the two wanted to say, Lord, if you will sit as a king of Israel, let my two sons live on, sit on the right and on the left. And the ten quarrel also and said, why? Only the two of you can sit. We sit also repeating what happened in the twelve tribes that only one should be a king, but the rest won't. They repeated exactly typology in the Old Testament. Why Jesus riding in a call? Because the kings at the time when they ride a horse with all the exhibit, the slaves, and the boaty that they come from other nations would make them so proud. But Jesus, who is a humble, the king of Israel, should ride a colt and a donkey, symbol of humility and exactly opposites of the kingship of the other nations that Israel wanted to follow in their syncretism, in their syncretistic way of looking at the world. Questions. The king of praise. Luke 19, 38. Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory to the highest. And some of the Pharisees called him from the crowd, teacher, rebuke your disciples. It was anointing, irritating, disgusting to the Pharisee, to the religious leaders when the disciples shouting, blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord because they have already determined they have only one king, Caesar, who oppressed them to the end, to the skin, to the bones. They were a lot. A lot of false messiah killing their everything. That's why they hated the Romans. But when Jesus arrived to deliver them, they said, prepare. It's better to have a pagan king rather than Jesus the king. So John 8, 36, Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. My kingdom were of this world. My servants would fight so that I should not be delivered to the Jews. But now my kingdom is not from here. And Pilate therefore said to him, Are you a king then? Jesus answered, You see rightly I am a king, for this cause I was born, and for this cause I have come into the world that I should bear witness to the truth, and everyone who is in the truth hears my voice. I love that. Reason. The encounter between religious and secular leaders. The religious leaders dethroned Jesus. They don't want to hear Jesus is the king. They have been disgusted when people praising Hosanna in the name of the Lord. And so Pilate questioned. From Pilate sought to release him, but the Jews cried out, If you let this man go, you are not Caesar's friend. Whoever makes himself a king against Caesar. When Pilate therefore heard the saying, he brought Jesus out and sat down in the judgment seat in the place. It's called in the pavement, but in the Hebrew called Gabata. Now it was preparation day and the Passover and about six hours. And he said, behold your king. But they cried, 
away with him, away with him, crucify him. Pilate said to them, shall I crucify your king? Look at the leaders, religious leaders. The chief priests answered, we have no king but Caesar. Then deliver him, them to be crucified. They took Jesus and led him away. What a history. The king of praise was crucified. Then of Jewish provision. John 19, verse 19, now Pilate wrote a title and put it on the cross. The writing was Jesus of Nazareth, the kings of the Jews. Don't you know that is racism? King of the Jews. Many of the Jews read the title for the place where Jesus was crucified near the city. It was written in Hebrew, Greek, and Latin. Therefore, the chief priest said, uh, the chief priest of the Jews said to Pilate, do not write king of the Jews. But he said, he said, he's the king of the Jews. As I told you, the meaning of the word Judah, Jews, in abbreviation means praise. That's why it was not really a so-called racial discrimination. King of the Jews. But if I would to translate that in my own theology, the king of praise has come and yet they have rejected it. According to Ellen White, Great Controversy, page 22, Christ saw in Jerusalem a symbol of the world hardened in unbelief and rebellion, hastening to meet the retributive judgment of God. Why? King Jesus, the king of praise, was dethroned, removed, rejected, and they chose a criminal, and they chose a pagan king. It will happen in the end. Remember Hebrews 6.20. Even Jesus, having become the high priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. Hebrews 7.2 says, Melchizedek means king of righteousness. Then king of Salim, meaning king of peace. They rejected the king of righteousness, the king of praise, the king of peace. Hebrews 14, 7, 14, it is evident that our Lord arose from Judah. The tribe where Moses spoke nothing about priesthood, but about kings. Yet it is far more evident if the likeness of Melchizedek, there arise another priest who has come not according to the law, the fleshly commandment, but according to the power of an endless life. For he testified a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. Very sad. Just imagine, they're waiting for years and years, millennium for the Messiah to come, since Eve and Adam. But when the king of righteousness, the king of peace, the king of praise, arrived, they changed it with a pagan king who oppressed them, who destroyed them, become their worst enemy, but the enemy becomes sweet because they have rejected Jesus. They have not followed God's plan. So Jesus was slighted, abused, rejected. The people of God had chosen a Roman pagan king. Why such horrible decision? They oppressed by the Romans? It is a microcosm that turns into macrocosm in the end time. The highest spiritual leader shouted at the top of their voice in the final decision against Christ. We have no king but Caesar. Ellen White says every step on the rejection of Christ is a step towards rejection of salvation and towards sins against the Holy Spirit. In rejecting Christ, the Jewish people committed unpardonable sin. The Sire of Egypt, 324. God withdrew his protection from them and removed the restraining power from Satan and his angel. Now the nation was left to control 
of the leader that they have chosen. Caesar and Satan, she had chosen. Great controversy, page 28. Lessons from Jerusalem rejection of Christ. Jesus looking down to the last generation, our generation, saw the world involved in deception similar to that caused the destruction of Jerusalem. The great sin of the Christian world would be rejection of God's law, the foundation of his government in heaven and on earth. The precept of Jehovah would be despised and set to note millions in bondage to sin, slaves to Satan, doomed to suffer the sick and death, would refuse the words of truth in the day of visitation. Terrible blindness, strange infantuation. Great Controversy, page 22, 23. Did you understand that? What's the biggest problem the sins of the world today? Rejection of God's law. I hear that from many religious. We don't need the law. What we need is grace. Christ, we need to live. remove the law. We are in chaos. It is the law that make it order in our society, in our home. But yet, thousands. And Ellen White would say, the great sins of the world, the Christian world, is rejecting God's law. Only the boys now to keep the commandments of God is the Seventh-day Adventist is the only lone voice preaching throughout the whole world. Keep the law of God because that is His will. Our hope and pardon was past passing. The cup of God's long-suffering differed. Wrath was almost full. The clouds had been gathering through ages of apostasy. Now the black wall about to be burst in the guilty people who could save them from the impending faith, slighted, abused, rejected, was soon to be crucified. When Christ should hang upon the cross of Calvary, Israel day as a nation, favored and blessed of God would be ended. What a lesson for us. It started only in changing the plan of God, who is their king. Now they chose pagan king, which is behind the pagan king, is Satan, the dragon who wants to master and control this planet Earth. We have understand what happened to Stephen. Jewish sealed their destiny when they stoned Stephen. You step naked. And circumcised in heart and ears. You always resist the Holy Spirit. As your father did. Which the prophet. Persecuted. And they killed those who foretold coming of the just one. Who have received the law. By the direction of angels. And have not kept it. When they heard these things. They were cut to the heart. They gas their teeth. Then being Holy Spirit, full of Holy Spirit, gazed to heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus. Standing on the right hand of God and said, look, I see heaven opens and the Son of Man standing in the right hand. And they cried with a loud voice and they stopped their ears and ran with one accord and they cast him out of the city and stoned him. Just imagine. They can afford to reject slighted their king much more with Stephen. It's a lesson for us in the last generation who are living on planet Earth. The close of probation of Israel becomes the opening probation of the Gentiles. The ordination of the 12 disciples, Jesus is strictly prohibited not to go to Samaria to Gentiles, but exclusively to the lost tribe of Israel. After crucifixion, ascension, and Pentecost, the gospel was to proclaim to all the words. In other words, start in Jerusalem, all Judea, Samaria, and to the end of the world. The privileges of Israel as a people was transferred to the Christian who accepted Jesus as the Messiah of Bible prophecy. Israel failed her high calling and mission, therefore was replaced by a new created people of God, the Christians. It started in the apostolic era, the pure church, and in, in the church of Laodicea, the last church on earth. Look at this table that I have made. 
the secret history of the last stages of God's search on earth. So we have here the seven churches, the seven seals, the seven trumpets, and the seven flags. Look what happened towards the end. And so here are the signs. We are in the end. Laodicea. Christ is coming very soon. Who is our king? So let me see. The typological implication. The ending of the Israel of God. The physical Israel and the spiritual Israel. The Israel of God that came out of Egypt ended in Babylon. And the spiritual Israel preached the gospel also ended in spiritual Babylon. We are now in Babylon. The end of the world. The physical Israel and spiritual Israel have the same sin. Rebellion, apostasy, idolatry, wickedness, abomination that led to desolation. In short, the literal Israel as well as the spiritual Israel turned into a state from a virgin to a harlot. The ending of proclamation of the eternal gospel was eternal, was in a spiritual Babylon. This is the reason why, why God raised the remnant church who keep God's commandments and have the faith of Jesus. Today, we are in Babylon. Jesus, the king, versus the king behind the scarlet woman, which is the dragon. Why? To deceive. To deceive. And deception start in Eden. And it ends in the end. So the Christian have three enemies in the end. The three foes of the remnant in the end, in the, the end time. The enemies is the dragon, the wounded or the sea beast, the lamp-like beast. The battle over truth and error, righteousness and wickedness, light and darkness. The counterfeit demonic trinity with all its deceptive forces against divine trinity and all its forces in counteracting the genuine truth of salvation of God. The three angels' messages are opposed by counterfeit three unclean spirits that deceived the entire world by signs and wonder to secure allegiance to the side of the dragon, Satan, who tried to usurp the throne and the kingdom of God, as prophet Isaiah said. The king of Babylon behind it is Satan, declares, I will ascend to heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will be like the most high. The dragon is still unseen king behind the spiritual Babylon. Recorded in Revelation chapter 13 to 19, he uses other agencies to make deception so powerful. The final issue in the end conflict, my brothers and sisters, is written in Genesis. Genesis 3, Satan used the most beautiful, intelligent agent for subtle infiltration in the domain of God, the serpent. The issues are the authority of God's law and his word, and the character of God and loyalty. For Satan said to him, did God say? Questioning the trustworthiness of God's word and authority. Twisting and mixing with error and reprogram the mind of convincing evidence through other senses. Subtle deception. You will not surely die. Today, throughout the whole world, Adventism is the only one shouting about immortality. That this immortality that he preached. We are not born immortal. We are born mortal. And so, we have to counter at this one. You will be like God. Eve did not think of that and, 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 and Adam. That is Satan's inmost desire to be like God. The same issue found in the book of Revelation. In forms, in no one says, but the same principle. The final issue in the end time is the conflict in Genesis. It completes in Genesis 4, worship. In Genesis 3, deception. Twisting the truth, mixing the truth, 
questioning God's authority, questioning God's word and character. But Cain and Abel worship God. But God accepted, oh well, sorry, this is wrong. But God accepted Abel because it was in harmony of his will. Okay? But Cain, behind his action of worship was the devil. John makes it. 1 John 3, 12. Do not be like Cain, who belonged to the evil one, who murdered his brother. Why did he murder him? Because his own action were evil and his brother were righteous. We find this event between Abel and Cain repeated in a global scale where the true worshippers of God will be killed by a false worshippers of Satan. In the end, global conflict is worship with all its ramifications. Remember that worship is the highest forms of obedience, allegiance, and loyalty. This world will not end in military wars as many believe. But as Jesus indicated in his last day discourses, this gospel of the kingdom of God, we preach into all the world as a witness to all nations, then the end will come. So, the conflict in the end is religion. So, here, if, you, we, if we discuss what are the two schemes of destroying God's people that Satan uses in the end? Satan uses two particular methods of destroying God's people in the end time, as portrayed in Genesis 3 and 4. Infiltration through deception. In all its forms, and second, coercion or by force or violence. Through persecution, all in its agency and form. Remember in the Dark Ages, Satan used coercion or force or violence, but he was not successful. Because many of his servants turned into the banner of Christ because they exhibited such stones, faith, courage, fidelity, loyalty, and witnesses converted their enemies. If you read the beautiful book, Great Controversy, pages 40 to 45, you will find that Satan also is tanga. He was, because he thought persecuting will, will be successful, but he found many of those who died were replaced by his own people, and he changes that. Stop. Global persecution. Deception of all kinds. So Satan trains his strategy, deception. He is successful as the book of Revelation indicated. Seven times the word deception in the end time section of the book repeated. The word is absent from historical part of Revelation. Satan has a global ways of deception and individual way of deception. This is in harmony with Jesus who repeatedly used the praise. Be careful not to be deceived. The ultimate question is who is your king? My brothers and sisters, in the end time, we have to decide who is our king. The pagan king was chosen by the apostatized people of God, starting from their leaders. In the end time, who will be our king? And you know, today, around the world, nations are say. In this pandemic, we need one person to rule. Who is your king? What is your decision? It is so important. Why? Because we have seen it. The chosen people of God. When the king of Judah arrived, the king of praise, the king of righteousness, the king of peace, was dethroned, replaced by a pagan king who destroyed their faith, their lives, their nation, their identity, and that's a consequence. I would like to make an appeal. Choose Jesus. 
as your only king. The only king, because in the end time, there are only two kings of this world who secure allegiance, the dragon, but he's not presenting behind the Babylonian spiritual kingdom where the rulers of the earth, the kings of the earth, the merchants of the earth follow homage. The question keep on coming. Who is your king? For me, there is only one. The king of praise. The king of peace. The king of righteousness. King Jesus. Choose him. This is my prayer.